Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome back to the final recording of Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations Case Free Recipe for Turnabout 4-2 Trial. Yeah! It might be two, split into two episodes, or it might be a one long one. You'll know, we'll but we don't out. right now. Anyhow, like, we're still like cross-examining the tiger. Now, I can't remember if this is one where if you press anything that you can penalize. Well, so, we'll find out. So the meeting wasn't due to take place at Tenderlender at all then? The kid was making a fuss about coming into the office. It's always that way when I want to talk about repayments. Even though I got the best punchy bag you ever seen if there isn't any issues. <sighs> Maybe it's because of the punching bag that people are scared to come. So that's why you decided to meet at Trabion? Ha. Huh. You're going over old ground again, Trite. S sorry. You just earned yourself a penalty. Now suck it down. You will suck down the penalty, Mr. Wright, <laughs> and you will like it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> Thanks, sir. May I have some more? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, open the open door. Open the door to the joint. I saw one That's ugly scene. That's probably not something we need to press, but <laughs> you're going to do it anyway. An ugly scene? What do you mean? The witness has already told us trite, which makes that question irrelevant. B but... I limit myself to 17 cups of coffee during a trial. That's the rule. Okay. You better limit the number of times you take a penalty, Trite. Or your guts will look like the inside of a chimney. Ashen. Don't make me burn you again, Mr. Wright. Wow. I guess I shouldn't have pressed him on that. Guess I'm gonna make that special express after all. So to recap, this ugly scene you saw was... Oh, but the judge! Does he get penalized? Is that how it works? The judge! Yeah! <laughs> he just asked the same thing that we did! Yeah, but he's not gonna get penalized, because he's the judge. He's laid out stiff as concrete. It's like, um, if you're in baseball, the umpire isn't gonna get a penalty. If something happens. <laughs> he might get beat up by the fans, though. He might get beat up, but he's not gonna get a penalty for any calls that he makes. <laughs> You mean you saw Glenn Elg's dead body? Wow. I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. Wait, what? He was wearing some raggy bit of cloth he called a hat. And what time was this? I don't know. Huh? You know what winds me up more than anything else in the world? Watches! Round watches! I ain't gonna pollute my paws with some ticking henpecker. Uh, out of interest, Mr. Tiger, what winds you up the second most? Huh? What do you think? Square watches! <laughs> Is this guy for real? Look, all I needed to know was that something bad was going down in that place. Oh, hey, no penalty. Okay. I figured well, if the place wasn't hot already, it would be. So I split. He saw it from behind. What mm -hmm. I want to know, I want you to pull up the plans. Because there's something that's intriguing me. So, which seat at that booth was the dude sitting at? The one on the right. Okay. Yeah, you could see him from behind then. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to no, no, no. figure out. I, I like that you're thinking about it. Yeah, I'm like normal where I'm just like, eh, this probably happened. <laughs> but you're often right when that is the case, which is weird. So you didn't not, actually- I'm not always right. No, you're not. But you're shooting often Shooting off the right. gun, shooting off the gun. I'm still impressed you got Matt on guard scar right immediately. <laughs> well, because I was like, always oh, hairs hanging down so low. It'd be hilarious if there was like a scar underneath and you're like- yeah! <laughs> sure would. <laughs> so you didn't actually set foot inside the restaurant then? The tiger's a busy cat. I don't hate around for no one. I ain't got time to be caught up in no murder investigation. So when exactly did you pick up the matches? There are matches just inside the front door. Our detective friend wound up in trouble in the chef <laughs> with the chef after taking five books home. Poor gumshoe. It's almost enough to make a man cry. Hold up, but in order to buy those matches, you'd have to bring them to the front, wouldn't you? Buy? He just took them. Hence the trouble. He just took them. I saw, heard the cop sirens on my way out. Eh, okay. You went straight back? Did a bout of guilt suddenly hit for what you did? No. What are you trying to say? You trying to tell me you ain't never been guilty of nothing? Um, we all have our crosses to bear. 
stealing we all, a matchbox. We all have to swallow the dark secrets we hide. Like this. The courtroom's not exactly the place to talk about dark secrets, is it? It seems you've done it again, Mr. Wright. Another irrelevant line of questioning. I must impose a penalty accordingly. Okay. How about a penalty for those two jokers and the garbage they keep coming up with? <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick, what do you think? He's running out of ways to avoid the truth. I need to press him fast and before he has time to think things through. I've got to come right back at him with a contradiction. Be careful when you pre what you press him on, though, or you'll get penalized, okay? Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Do I look like Tiger? Your, your tongue's hanging out of the wrong side. Ah! <laughs> and still no. <laughs> You're not orange. That's true. And that you don't have the terrifying. scar across his left eye. Yeah. All I can think of is the, like, nice sumo costume, but your scar's on the wrong side of your face! It's not on the it's wrong side! Butt. I want to watch that again. I used to be boomerang guy. Um, I saw one ugly scene. Quasimodo was there. If I picked they to eat you French food, probably, oh, oh, this, this would, would be it. it. <laughs> uh, uh, he's not laid that out one. stiff as concrete. If it wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. Sure. Right. I don't think he went straight back to his office. Where do you think he went? I went down the slide into Vitamin Park. <laughs> it looked mean, pretty cool. I mean, maybe. He had his scooter. Maybe that was when he ran rendezvous into uh, the good Haverini's car. And the that happened time. months ago! <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, but now it's a couple months ago. Not not enough, It was like six months ago. <laughs> that was the other thing I did not get right, was motorcycle Oh, beats motorcycle car. beats car. It's like, um, <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I thought it would be good. <laughs> um, Meet the kid, yeah. Meet the kid, saw an ugly scene. He was laid out over the well, table. Well, we don't know when he showed up, do we? No, we don't, because he's- I don't wear a watch! <laughs> yeah, but, like, ugh. If- so... Okay, we can think about this. If- If he walked in when- like, just after the poisoning had happened, he didn't mention there was an old man there, so the old man must have already run out by then. Yeah. So, it would be one... Fifty? Two? <laughs> Something like that. And the police didn't show up till at least 2.30, I think. But remember, our we, our theory is that there was the fake uh, Glen Elg. Yeah. And the police didn't- the police did not show up till like, 2.30. Yeah, which is... So he could've easily shown they up didn't in, in get that called. time frame. But they didn't get called until after right. 2. Right, They were within that time frame. So then he could've... I'm trying to figure out if there's evidence if he came over the kitchen. Came over the kitchen, came through. <laughs> Went jumped. to the kitchen. <laughs> the, the tiger jumped over the kitchen. Okay. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's figure out evidence we could present. It is this statement, I believe. Okay. She wasn't stiff. <laughs> um. Uh, good cross-examination music. It is good. I... Oh, shoot. I'll give you a hint. You were very close to being on the right track earlier. Earlier? Okay. Is it, um... Is it having to do with one of, like, either the, um, the medical papers or the loan contract? No. No? The scooter? Nope. How would that make any sense with regards to the statement? I don't know. I'm just thinking about stuff. Maybe the, um, the magazine clipping with the, how he was there and... How, what does that have to do with this statement? I don't statement know. I'm on? literally just trying to process. But I process aloud. So, sorry. Uh, maybe next page. Um, no, no. All I can think about is the guy where he was laying, how would he have seen him through, if he went through the front door? Good but question. I don't know how... Well, if we look at the floor plan. Sure. So the front door's there, on yeah. the far upper right. Yeah. 
and there's he made like it the sound counter like he there walked, yeah and then there are the tables all yeah over which he wouldn't have been able to see him i don't think but he would have seen him from behind if that were the case would he technically well because you would have seen his back because glenn elg's in that chair yeah he's in that chair Unless that's taken from the opposite side. So this is, no, this is taken from upper left, upper right. Okay, so he's yeah, the he's upper in right. that chair. You wouldn't be able to see But you can't see, see the front him. door from here. No, you can't. So what I'm trying to figure out is there's a combination of there's no way he could have seen him from the front door as well as there's no way he could have seen him from behind. He would right. have only been able to see him in front. So I'm trying to figure out what to present to prove that. Just the floor plans? Um, let's try the floor plans. Okay. Booyah. You're something of a lone collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tiger? No one escapes the tiger's clutches! Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I oh, think, that's funny. <laughs> I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning? No. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tiger. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true. You know what? I'm like 6'6", six, six, and I can see over it. But Glen Oak is not, so we would have to be <laughs> look yeah. down. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully what obvious. What you eating, kid? It's like, oh, all of this. <laughs> From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. Ugh, look at that sweat protruding off his face. So, from the entrance of Trabion, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day, because you met with him. Rom, have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? What about Maggie? Everyone's completely disregarding her testimony <laughs> altogether. <laughs> the, but that's because she's the defendant, and they're like, well, she, she's of course she's lying to protect herself. All the other witnesses could- This is why I don't want to ever be a lawyer, because I'm like, everybody lies. The victim was alone at his table. But the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenn Elg, but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out the charade. That will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? That's true. You say the killer murdered Glenn Elg, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Mr. Victor Kudo? In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. Well, this is easy. Viola? Bruno Cadavri! No! <laughs> that would not work Obviously, it's the person you least expect. Um... What's the matter, Your Honor? Oh, nothing! I just dropped my pen again. Don't mind me, carry on with the proceedings as normal. We still get penalized despite that. Better think again while he's down there, Nick. I guess I should have picked the obvious choice. The obvious <laughs> choice! Very good, I found my pen now. So allow me to pose the question again, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. Obviously... The killer is Furio Tiger. Oh, I thought no they one were asking who it. was posing as the a Glen Elk. We are. But how? The They're like completely different. They're completely different skin tones. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How would you ever true. tell that? Because Victor Kudo didn't know Glen Elg, and he was more focused on the uh, hot gal. Th that and the earpiece and the eyepiece. Yeah. W what? Well, witness? Yeah. <laughs> now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Whenever he laughs, it makes <laughs> me think of Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just don't understand. The tiger's the key to the jungle, so I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts. Sure. Y you can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. 
Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You just got guts, I'll give you that. M M Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. Ha. Huh. Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. No! But Mr. Godot- We don't want the prosecution to end this. Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see just the victim. Oh, no, no, no. The serving girl brought him a Java Chino, but she put something in it! There's no question about it! She very conspicuously put some white powder in there! Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused put the poison into the coffee. Unless it's Viola that's dressing up as the girl. That's true. That's, what, what, I, that's what I suspected for the whole time. <laughs> Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack? Ha. Found your pen at last, trite. <laughs> it was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenelg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also a part of the show. Yeah, like I've been- What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Come to think of it, they had an extra outfit because Maya was able to wear it when she worked there. Yep. So it could very well work because they're not going to just like rip the clothes off of her while she's unconscious. That would be a bit wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> and also, Victor Kudo didn't see her messy apron that Maggie was wearing. No. So we know she that. She just didn't saw happen. her from behind. Who on earth why, was it? Which is why I thought it was her the who whole time. Who was the waitress who Mr. Kudo witnessed? Yeah. I've literally been calling this the entire time. <laughs> it was Kudo! <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Obviously, it's the person you least expect. Um, what's the matter, Your Honor? Oh, nothing. I just dropped my pen again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me carrying on with the proceedings as normal. Better think again while he's down there, Nick. Uh, I guess I should pick the obvious choice of the exact same die. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, no question in your brain. Wh who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of the Tender Lender. You was making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? Yeah. You better be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick! Wh where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had a kind of cackling laugh. Yeah. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen... The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. That really worked out that that happened, by the way. <laughs> and the radio show he was supposed to be listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real and once for show. Ooh. And Mr. Furio Tiger, the only person who could have committed the crime, was you. Is it gonna roar like a tiger? And you're gonna hear me roar. Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. Sorry. You's all right. I could do with a guy like you around. Uh, no. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get to my meeting now, but I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. What? Something to think about? You's got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you just missed out on one real important thing. Sure. Let's hear it. But that can't be. Let's hear it. I was in on the joint that day. And I met that kid too. Okay, fine. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you hear? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, <laughs> Mr. Tiger? <laughs> ha. What a troublemaker. T troublemaker? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. 
another cup of coffee. <laughs> of course. One more steaming <laughs> cup of hot testimony. Come on. I told you you ate a few more. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I'll give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trabion between yourself and the victim? So much for never going back on what I say. Yeah. <laughs> Ties to the victim. Yeah, I loaned El Cash about $100,000. Right, which we knew. That day, we he was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his pay date check, see? Yeah, after three days. So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I want half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Well, I'm guessing, here. here's what happened. They were like, okay, this dude hasn't paid up. This is a problem. They had already scheduled this poisoning thing. You don't just decide to poison someone and then five minutes later find the potassium cyanide. <laughs> like, it doesn't really <laughs> That's happen. That's true. <laughs> so they already had planned it. And then it's like, oh man, I want half a million bucks. And then she's like, eh. And then just <laughs> gives it to him anyway. Because she didn't hear him screaming half a million bucks. And How? Even Armstrong heard it from the kitchen. Even if you were in the, the women's room, you'd still hear, Yeah! Half a million bucks! <laughs> Even though he's just on the happy pills. Maybe they wanted all the money. <laughs> oh, that's possible. Because they had said that they were having trouble in Tenderlander. Mm -hmm. So they were like, maybe... Or maybe he wanted to get, like, on the... Godfather, grandfather's good side. <laughs> the god, gra the grand godfather. <laughs> that would be a great sequel to the Godfather. They already made a Godfather sequel. They can make another one, <laughs> knowing, knowing America, they would make another movie like twenty years later. If they did that with Star Wars and the Terminator, <laughs> did they make a newer Terminator? Yeah, where it's like, oh yeah, he's old. It's like he's a robot who can't <laughs> age. <laughs> Terminated. <laughs> Now I see to that the principal amount you loaned Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you've got the VIG to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. Not that fast. That's faster than fast! $100,000 is twice his principal! And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. <sighs> His motive? Hmm, he has to have one, but what is it? I mean, just wanting half a million bucks to pay for medical bills would be great. It's true. Ties didn't to he, the victim. Didn't he, not he needed a, it? he needed yeah, he hadn't finished it. He still he didn't need a whole million. Yeah, then he would just want that. Also, there's the whole problem of the guy that's like, I I needed a half a million dollars. Oh. <laughs> so there's a yep, lot. That's what he sounds like. There's a lot of different reasons he could get the one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All right, he won't elk the cash. Because... Did he have any way of paying back the cash? No. The fool was a gambler. He said he couldn't give it up till he landed a big win. So I agreed to help him. Help him? You? I kept hitting him with ideas for ways he could get the big, uh, get a big win. But the guy kept losing. So, you were helping him for his sake, or yours? Win through compromise! Use help me, I help use. What's the difference, huh? I don't believe this! <laughs> Nick, would anyone ever really loan money to someone they thought was unreliable? Like, for example, if I were you, I'd only loan you five bucks max. Thanks a lot, Maya. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's very few people I would loan more than $5 to, I feel like. Uh, here's my thing. If you loan someone money, don't expect to ever get the money back. Yeah. Unless you're a bank. <laughs> Unless you're a bank and you're like, pay up, kiddo. <laughs> How much were you expecting him to pay you back on that day? We already know. What do you think? The whole package. $100,000 including interest. That's a real heavyweight punch. Once a client misses a repayment, you call the whole loan in. You want to make it in my world? That's all you've got to know. And how many times had Mr. Elk been late with his repayments? Once. And how much was he supposed to pay back every month? Fifty bucks. Sounds like Mr. Elk was in a really sticky spot. Yeah, at fifty dollars a month, he'd never pay that huge loan off. So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. How much did he have left on his debt? You wanted in rough round figures, about a hundred thousand bucks. 
That's the whole amount! <laughs> We're talking about a guy who had 58 cents in his wallet. What? You just told me he wasn't even gonna pay for the coffee? He certainly seems to have been a brave man, this Mr. Elg. That guy was smooth, I tell you. Real smooth. You'll have your money in less than five minutes. That's what he says to me. The guy then calls me the Tender Tiger. He was skating on thin ice with me. Okay. The other thing that I just remembered is that if he made this program virus, if he wanted that program virus, he could get even more money. That's true. There's a lot of different reasons this guy would want the money <laughs> I'm and to kill him. I'm the guy. He starts screaming. <laughs> All I can think of is Daisy from, like, Strikers, like, Yeah! 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 <laughs> Was that because he... The guy won the lottery. Was his last chance at a big win. And you can confirm that this is the ticket in question? That's it. Cool. The Millionaire Radio Show starts at 1.30pm and runs for 10 minutes. That fixes the time you two met with some accuracy. And the whole scene was acted out again 30 minutes later. All so that Mr. Kudo would see it. I could still see the kid's face now. I ain't ever gonna forget this it. This is so elaborate. <laughs> yeah, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky. Real lucky. Yeah. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? No. I don't remember. Really? If there was no one there, I'll wear that ridiculous tiger shirt for a month. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie, and if I'm right, Viola Cadaverini were all there at the time. So the victim had intended to repay you from uh, his lottery winnings from the beginning? Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Ha. The undying belief that your next roll will end the worst losing streak you ever had. That's what defines a true gambler. He makes it sound so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick. You haven't got the willpower for it. <laughs> All I know is that kid took a shot and he got lucky in the end. Not really lucky, he died. That's <laughs> that, not lucky. <laughs> if that waitress hadn't done what she did, everything would have been over. Uh-huh. The waitress? You mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't got in the way, things would have been bing a bang bada-boom, over bada and done bing, with. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Bada-bing, bada-boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. Yeah. Ask about what Maggie oh. did. Ask about how things would have been. Well, we already know from him how things would have been. It would have been, here's your money, here's your thing, goodbye. Yep. What exactly are you implying the defendant did? How about you go ask Four Eyes about that half a million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad, she poisoned Elk's coffee. A likely theory. Your word hasn't held water lately, Mr. Tiger. Let's not forget this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. The law doesn't exactly agree with some of the deals I send down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. Oh, uh, I see. Um, <laughs> that's against the law. Your Honor, the witness's last few statements are worth a few, t a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Godot. You'll amend your testimony accordingly, perfect, witness. Perfect, perfect. Alright. <laughs> so that's what you's after, Phoenix, right? Yeah. Thanks to what she did, my business with that kid was over. Oh, that's it? I thought we were going to get a better statement. The tiger's trying to pin the crime on Maggie. If I ask him about what he saw, it's only going to damage our case. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash! I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before the waitress got in the way. Hmm, as far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his debt, Mr. Tiger had no motive for killing the victim. Well, Mr. Wright, are you happy with the testimony, or would you like it amended? Wait, amended meaning? Instead of the statement we pressed on, he'll be talking about how he just wanted the money back, basically. Um... Can we screw up and end up in a forever game over if we pick You one can never do that in a straight okay. game. Well, let's just pick something. Actually, the closest you can do for that is right before you get a penalty saving. And when it's the last possible penalty, in which case, yeah, you you have to start from the beginning of the chapter. Yeah. But you'd have to be very stupid to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to get anywhere with the testimony as it stands. Your Honor, the defense would like the testimony amended. Very well. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect your recent statements, please. I was after the hundred thousand dollars. I didn't have no reason to kill the guy. Um. Are you saying you had no other motives that day? 
Yeah, so what? Then why didn't you take the lottery ticket when you left? Why do you stink? Because of Four Eyes over there. Because of Maggie? How about you go ask Four Eyes about that half a million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad, she poisoned out coffee. Oh. Oh, wow, it's just like a circular loop. Whoops. <laughs> oh, okay. Were we supposed to leave it? I mean, we need one of these two statements. Okay. So, your theory kind of is he definitely had another motive than the $100,000? Oh my gosh, yes. He has like three! <laughs> he could have the lottery ticket. He could pay off the debts. He could get good with the Godfather. <laughs> he could also, um, what was the other thing? He could get his business out of debt. He could help out, um, the chef! Why would he want to help the chef? Well, but the chef also wanted the half a million dollars. Yeah, but he okay, didn't take this it. This is literally, okay, this is quite literally. Do you remember from um, Murder Mystery Trivia Party? It's like, the money pile, you can take it, but whoever doesn't dies. If you all take the money, you all die. And basically... Yeah, that game sucks. <laughs> or like the sticky stun bun or whatever from Spy Fox, where everyone's just like, ah! and they all die for it. <laughs> That's the spy trap. Was that... The nickel. No, th that's a different one. In Dry Siri, yeah. He throws the nickel, they yeah, all die for also, it, and then they get but trapped. there's also the sticky stun bun. And Only one like, guy reaches <laughs> for it. <laughs> that's Only true. <laughs> the one dude. I better leave it at that and try to figure something out. Thank you, Your Honor, but there's no need to amend the testimony. Very well. Continue with your cross-examination, then. So the tiger was meeting Glenn Elk to get his money back. If Mr. Elk had just given him the lottery ticket, that would have been the end of it. Yeah, so what's the tiger's motive? This is the big one. If I don't manage to undermine this testimony, it's all over for us. Why would he have to poison Mr. Elg? And why did he loan him the money I in the first I love how he's place? saying this aloud. <laughs> when he knew he couldn't repay him. I know the answer, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has all right. to be that. Alright. So, Let's look through all the things that I mentioned. So, okay, but here's the thing. Elg was going to give him the lottery ticket. Essentially. Yeah. So it's not that. So you're thinking it could be the virus. Could absolutely be the virus. The virus is worth millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Like that would 100 percent yeah. solve all of his problems. Basically. Yeah, because um, that's just half a million. He wants the MC bomber. Hence why there's all the writings on the paper too. Yeah. It's like this is MC bomber. This is ha 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 ha. Master written mask. in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. Bad.